following is a podcast of Echo, a middle school ministry at Victory Family Church. For more details, visit lifeatvictory.com slash middle school. Sweet. Good morning, Echo. How you guys doing today? How we feeling? Are we awake? Kind of. A little sleepy. Can we all be honest with ourselves for a second? How many of us struggled to get out of the cocoon that you were wrapped up in your bed nice and warm this morning? Anybody? Can I see your hand? That was me. That was me. Very cool, guys. Well, we're so glad you're here. There's something you got to know. I need you to look to your neighbor real quick and say, you belong. I'll look to your other neighbor and tell them that they're family. And since we're doing a, a, a neck workout right now, look back at your other neighbor. Give them a hand hug. Show, show a little bit of love to your neighbor. Sweet. Sweet. Guys, we're so glad you're here. You're family. You belong. And... Um, you know, before we get started, I just want to take a moment and just recognize, recognize Angie. Angie is such an awesome, awesome, mighty woman of God, and it's just such an honor that she took time out of her busy schedule to come and just give us God's word. So if we could just give her a round of applause and welcome her real quick, guys, as she comes up. <laughs> give her the same respect that you would give me. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Good morning, Echo. You guys awake? Yeah, yeah, you're a little lively. I feel it. I feel the pep in your step. Now, what time did you all wake up? Six. I heard two, 2 a.m.? Oh, dear. So you've been up since 2 a.m.? Oh, so you're in the middle of your peak, your height. Who? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We all have, are on different schedules here, huh? I'm excited. I'm so excited for you guys to be here this morning. How many of you were here last night? Just raise your hand real quick. Oh, just a few of I love it. Okay. So a whole new group. Pastor Ben, that's awesome. Um, real quick, I, Kendall, where are you? Yes, I am calling you out. Did he just walked out? Oh, Kendall, when he comes in, make sure that he, I, I see him, Okay. Um, well, I am excited to be here. How many of you, this is your first time seeing me or meeting me? Oh, hi. Hey. Um, so a little bit about me real quick. I am from Pittsburgh, born and raised in Washington, which is probably about 50 minutes from here. Um, and I went to school at Trinity High School there. Then I went to Boston College in Boston, Massachusetts. Go Eagles. Um, and then after that, I lived in Florida, Pensacola, Florida, moved to Ohio, and now I'm here. So I've been, I've been everywhere, man. You know that song from one of those commercials? Anyway, that's how I feel. <laughs> um, and now I'm here with you today. So real quick, I just want to pray over the service, and then we're going to hop in, okay? All right. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord. What an honor and what a privilege, God. I thank you that you're such a good dad. That with us, Lord, you are pleased. We ask that our hearts would be open to receive your word, that our mind would understand, and that you would have your way. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so if you weren't here last night, I was talking about emotion, and um, we all know what it is, and we're kind of uh, in the throes of being run by it a lot of times. There's my boy, Kendall. Come here, Kendall. Sorry, then we'll get in. You guys, I just wanted to take a moment. Last night, I acknowledged Oliver and this amazing team that is here. You guys are blessed. These people, these shirts, they're all wearing these, well, you have an Echo shirt, I'm but the same either. color, same, <laughs> same difference, um, that are wearing these shirts. They love you guys, and they make this happen every Sunday and every Saturday and every special event. And I just wanted to bring Kendall up for a minute. I just want to pray over him real quick. Guys, since I've been here, so I came in last night. Um, Kendall was here before I got here, and he was here after I left. I mean, and I didn't leave until probably 11. Yeah, yeah, it was like 10 o'clock at night because I got home at 11. Um, and then when I got here this morning for the 9 a.m. service, he was already here. And so I appreciate that. And I know Pastor Ben and Pastor Alyssa, they value that. That is a beautiful, serving, giving heart. 
And I know you love what you do because you're passionate about it. I can see you do it with a smile. And I just want to honor you in front of everyone here and just pray over you, okay? okay? Guys, if you'll just reach your hands forward as if you're praying with us and believe and agree with me, amen? Thank you. Father, I thank you so much for Kendall and for his life, God. I thank you for his willingness to serve. God, I thank you for his tender heart towards you. I pray that, Father, today and every day going forward, his life would be filled of blessings, that your love would consume him and overflow him. I pray for divine direction and clarity concerning his purpose in life, God. I pray that from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, your presence, your power, your spirit would consume him. Let everything that he puts his hands to do prosper, God. And let him see with great clarity and with great understanding that what he sets to do for you, God, is expanded. It grows, Lord. We thank you for the gift that is Kendall. Bless him abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kendall. Bless you, buddy. I value that, guys. So I bless him. And let's just give it up for your team. Okay. Awesome. So last night when I was here, I talked about emotions, right? And what, what, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling that? And where, what is that going to produce, right? So probably this morning, like I was talking with the 9 a.m. class, that you guys are probably, in the morning, if you're anything like me, um, you don't wake up excited and happy. Like, my husband is like rearing to go. Like, baby, let's go. Let's attack the day. And I'm like, get out of my face. I need to wake up. You know, that's kind of how I feel. That's kind of how I feel. And so um, if you are like me at all, this morning you probably already had an emotion emerge when you woke up. And it was probably, why am I getting up? Why do I have to be awake right now? Right? You might have been kind of upset. Or maybe those of you who didn't go to sleep or were up at 2 a.m., you might have been like, dude, I'm ready to get out of this house. Right? Emotion. Emotion. We all feel it. That's what we live by. A lot of times we, we kind of feel things and we respond. We react. Um, and so we need to take a moment in life just for a practical application to understand when we have emotions, and this is into our adult life. Listen, I have to do it every day. Uh, what am I feeling right now? Okay, okay. Um, I'm excited. Okay, cool, cool. Why am I feeling that way? Oh, I mean, I'm with Echo, right? And what will it produce? Well, that, it's going to produce a great thing, right? It's going to allow God a space to do what he wants to do. We have to be able to understand those things and just pause. I mean, literally to ask these questions, it takes a second. And the reason it's important to ask these questions is because if you don't ask them, you will live your life ruled by emotions and all of your relationships will be a, uh, uh, a manifestation or a, um, uh, an example of what your emotions have produced. So a lot of times, in, for example, in an unhealthy marriage, if you're not checking your feelings, why you're feeling things, and, 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 and what that's going to produce, if you can you know, follow what that's making you feel like you want to do, it can lead to a very, um, a very bad atmosphere, right? Yelling, screaming. You know, uh, it's funny because I was telling them this morning, I said, you know, we always, well, you, you can see a confrontation as soon as you flip on the TV, right? Even if it's cartoons yelling at each other. And I say, we all, like, at some point or another, we yell at our siblings, right? Like, we yell at our parents, and then we think, oh, oh, I shouldn't have said that, right? Like, we yell at our friends. But what does yelling produce? If we were to follow that logically, so uh, my sister took something from me that I didn't want her to have because, quite honestly, I didn't want to share it. So if I ask the second question, why am I feeling that way? Well, because I'm being selfish. If I would have just gotten that far, I would have been able to stop before the yell and say, okay, I'm being selfish. Well, you can have that, right? It, produces a diff it could produce a different response. Or, I'm being selfish and I don't care, and you yell. And when you yell, have you found that things get a lot better? 
No, never, right? Like it never gets better. In fact, there are studies that tell us as soon as a confrontation goes to a yelling level, the neurons in the person that you're yelling at, they automatically shut off to respond in a positive manner. Hello, somebody. Like, so if I am yelling, I am actually defeating the purpose of why I am yelling. Most of the times we feel like if we raise our voice, it's because then they'll hear us better. Or I will express just how angry I am. You know? So if you go home today and your parents say, hey, what did you learn today? What, what, what were they talking about in Echo? And you just tell them, I learned that yelling produces nothing. They're going to be like, give me a high five, slap me on the... What do you, I'll take donuts. I'll provide donuts next time. You're going. Every week. Right? Because your parents probably don't want you guys yelling at each other, right? And maybe even they'll say, Mom, Dad, you know, I learned about yelling. You might be able to keep this in your back pocket if Mom and Dad start yelling. Hey, Mom, you know what I heard about yelling, right? (laughs) I know how you guys do, what you're thinking, how you're processing, right? So at any rate, we need to process our emotions so that our emotions are not dictating to us our life. A lot of people and adults, adults that I even work with on a regular basis, I can see that they're allowing their emotions to run their life because all of their relationships around them are broken or they're driven by how they feel. It's okay to have emotion. We're created for them. In fact, it's a beautiful part of who we are. It allows us to experience life. But it's not okay for those emotions to call the shots in our life. The second part of that, and what I want to focus on this morning, is not just like us processing our emotions, but recognizing that because these emotions are crucial in how we experience life. Like right now, sitting here, you have an emotion. Like there's, you can describe how you feel. Maybe you'll say, I'm tired. It's an emotion, right? Um, I'm excited with my friends, you know, or, or I'm bored. This chick needs to, like, be quiet so I can go out and play. I want to, you know, play air hockey, whatever, right? You have these emotions, and God designed you that way, and he wrote his signature on us in that way so that we can also experience him to the nth degree. If any of you are in math class, you understand it's very... Uh, Cerebral is a word, I would, or, or very mental, right? Very, very much in your headspace. And when you're calculating things out, you're not probably really feeling an emotion unless you love math or you hate it, okay? And you're like, I can't believe I've got to do this number again. I hate this, whatever, right? Or man, the numbers excite me. So it's, it's very heady. You're up here and you're calculating, calculating, calculating. And if, could you imagine if all of your friendships, like, are one of these guys one of your close friends? Yeah, okay. Could you imagine if when you hung out with them, it was like this? Hey, dude, let's go play basketball. Oh, that sounds like fun. Like, that would be emotionless, right? Like, would that even be fun? No, come on. That would be ridiculous. You'd have no life experience. You'd have nothing to get excited about. When Jesus says that he came to give us life and life abundant, it wasn't a life void of emotion. Abundance is to be like, whoa! Like in me, it evokes that, oh my gosh, like I'm overwhelmed by the goodness. So that's the God that we serve. He created us like this. And I know Pastor Ben spoke with you guys last week and and started talking and cultivating within you a desire to hear and know God's voice. Did you know that when God speaks, a lot of times you can feel it? It'll, It'll automatically create a response in you. In our nine o'clock service, a young man, I asked, hey, give me an example of when God may have spoke to you, when you heard his voice. And I'm not talking about a booming voice from heaven, right? There are times that God speaks about that, and we'll hear that today. But, but a lot of times when we hear the voice of God, it's a voice that we're hearing up here, right? It's coming through in a quiet whisper. I hear it, I process it, and it brings peace. And it makes me calm. Or it gets me excited. 
It gets me revved up. I'm, I'm ready to face a challenge. Did you know Jesus is your personal cheerleader? Like what? Your personal hype squad. Okay? Like, it is for real. I was telling them, I, I would love to take Alyssa and be like, Alyssa, girl, just come with me. And this is, this is what you do with me all day. Angie, you're amazing. You're awesome. I love you. Girl, you've got it. Oh, that task is easy for you. You're going to kill it. Would that not be awesome? Or like, dude, you are the man. Tryouts, you're worried about these tryouts? Dude, you're going to crush it. Do you know how strong? Dude, you're going to kill it. You're the best one out there. Would that not be amazing? Have a hype squad around you just being like, you rock. That's what Jesus does for you. That is what he is saying every day, all day long over you and about you. Like legitimately, he is continually communicating with you. Do you know that it says when a word is spoken, okay, the spoken word, that it literally, and this is science for my science folks, it literally continues in the atmosphere, continues forever. Though you may not hear it, it's gone away from your ear, it continues. Well, the word of God says that his word will not return void. In other words, it continues and it comes back and it produces. So when God spoke you into existence, he never stopped speaking you. When God designed you and said she is fearfully and wonderfully made, he never stopped saying that. And he never will. Jesus is your personal cheerleader. So how do we tap in to the voice of God? How do we really hone our ears? Because if we were created like him, if we were created by him and for him, he created in us a key, okay? And he has the key that unlocks us. Like any great master worker, crafter, you know, you make a beautiful picture. You put your signature on it so that they're like, oh, that's mine, right? God did the same thing with you. He wrote his words. He wrote himself. He tuned your ears to his station when he designed you. So though you may say, ah, you know, hearing the voice of God, this is kind of like a challenge. This is kind of new. You were designed to hear that voice better than any other voice. You were created to hear his voice more loudly than any other voice. But what happens, we have very present and very real people in our lives who speak things contrary to what he speaks. We intake visions and videos of things that are telling us contrary to what God is speaking to us. So in our life, we have, have, have to make space to hear the voice of God. And the only way you can do it is by what you're doing right now. You quiet yourself. You pause to give God space to speak. The young man who was sharing at the 9 o'clock service I said, hey, guys, tell me, tell me when do you feel God has spoken to you? He said, you know, I was studying for my spelling test. And I was having a really hard time, and I was really nervous about it. I was kind of freaking out, right? Like I was anxious that I wasn't going to get a good grade about it. And as he was studying, he heard God say, you're going to do good. It's okay. I'm with you. That is God. Those quiet moments where you hear, you've got this. That's God. That is not your voice. That is the voice of God that was placed inside of you, speaking to you to give you strength. Scripture tells us that every good gift comes from above. Would you not say that in the moment when you're anxious and you hear something like that, that is a good gift? 
right? That's a good gift because instantly, like he said, it made him feel better. He wasn't nervous anymore and he thought, okay, I can do this. I feel ready. That's a good gift. That only comes from above. And did you know that at your age, you can hear God better than anybody else on this earth? Did you know that? Don't you think it's interesting that at the age of 12 years old, Jesus spoke with wisdom that, pro- that blew the minds of scholars at 12? Why do you think that might be? Why do you think that God would choose to show himself at 12? Yeah. To inspire. To speak to us to say, hey, Jesus continually said in scripture, let the children come to me. Let them come, bring them to me. Why? Because he knew your ears and your thoughts and your heart were in tune with him because you haven't gone through so much of this junk to get jaded by the world and to have his voice pushed down further. You can hear the voice of God so clearly because you're so close to him. So I'm standing here telling you today, you can hear the voice of God in your life right here and now better than I can. You have the ability to hear from heaven and see from God things that I have not seen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? The word of God tells us that in those days he will pour out his spirit and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Do you think when they're saying this, when he's saying this, do you think he's talking about sons and daughters who are 80 years old? No, because next in scripture it says, your old men will see dream, have dreams and visions. He is specifically calling out that you, son, you, daughters, will prophesy. What does that mean? It means you hear from heaven and you will speak it forth. You in this room can hear from heaven and speak it forth. And when you speak it, the word of God says, what you decree, what you declare, I will make it come to pass. In your mouth, in your tongue, you have the power to shift your atmosphere. Even the atmosphere in your home. You have the ability and the power to shift your atmosphere within your classroom. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You have the ability to see lives transformed. Why? Because the transformer lives in you. When you speak, you're not just speaking your words. You're speaking the words of the one who created all things and continues to create through you. That is who you are. You have the ability to hear from heaven and speak it into existence. If you don't believe that, science tells us that just like Solomon said, if you think a thought long enough, if you meditate on it long enough, it will come to pass. That's just a thought. That's just a thought. That's not speaking. The word of God tells us that he what? He spoke the world into existence. He created through speaking. And then what did he do? He created us. And he said, now look, I give you the power to rule your world. That's what he said. He gave us 
the power to rule our world. And what's the first thing that Adam did? He spoke the names of all of creation. He heard from heaven and he spoke it to be so. Yeah. Yes. Dude, that's awesome to know scriptures, right? And it gives you power and strength. See, I love that because you know why? When you're having a hard time hearing the voice of God, there are going to be moments in life, believe me, I've been there, I've done that, where you're trying to discern your future or what you should do in a certain circumstance, and you get quiet before the Lord, and you feel like he might be a little bit silent. Anybody been there? Hello. Right? You feel like he might be silent. But guess what? He gave us his word which on mine is in my phone, my app. He gave us his word to help us when it's hard for us to hear, to look into and see, okay, God, what is it that I do? He already went before us. And did you know in your Bible, how many of you use like an actual Bible? Okay, awesome. That's what I use at home. And if you don't, if you have the app, that's cool too on your phone. In the back of your Bible, there is a concordance that if you are experiencing anything, you're having a hard time, you're like, man, I just don't know what to do. I have a lot of fear. You go into your scripture, flip it open to the F, fear, and it's going to give you all the scriptures regarding fear. And now you're going to have scriptures like that that you're going to be able to say, okay, Lord, you spoke to Joshua. You said, take courage. Take courage, my son. I'm taking courage. God, you're speaking that to me. If you spoke it to Joshua, you're speaking it to me. So take courage, my son. Take courage. God, I've got courage. I've got courage. Lord, strengthen me. Be fearful for nothing. God, yes. Lord, I receive that. That is at your hand, okay? That is how God speaks. And it's the same scripture that is vital to know and or to use that as you're growing and knowing the word of God to consult on that when you hear the voice of God or what you believe to be the voice of God, if you are uncertain if it is the voice of God, if you're questioning it, you go to the scripture and God will never contradict his word. He will never contradict his word. I had a young lady tell me she was 21 years old and she was having a relationship with a married man. I mean, hello, red flag, okay? But she felt that God had showed her this was her husband. I said, well, I can understand your confusion if you thought God spoke that to you. But let me give you a test real quick. Open up your Bible and find out what he says concerning being with a married man. Well, I know what it says. Well, if you know what it says, then you've got your answer. He never contradicts his word. So if there's a contradiction, you better consult your Bible and do what your Bible shows you to do. God speaks to you, young people. And not only does he speak to you on a daily basis over the things that are concerning you, like, you know, like your test and and your family situation. But he will speak to you concerning your friends and your family. He will speak to you to the point where you will prophesy. He will speak to you to the point where you will impact those around you. He doesn't just want you to have like, oh, it's cool. Like he, you know, he wants to be close to you and he wants you to hear him. But he doesn't just want like, oh, this is cool. Like I'm a friend and, and, and we go along and this amazing friend of mine, like I'm going to keep to myself. He wants to use you in a way that if you, if you can imagine, if you are the most, the most able, the most in tune with the voice of God at this age, What do you think he wants to do with you? See, the world would love to tell you you're too young to make an impact. You're too young to really make a difference. The world would love to tell you, well, you don't know any better. The way I read my scripture, every man of God that God called didn't know any better. 
every man of God besides, truthfully, Paul, was not a scholar of theology. They simply had a heart that they wanted to learn and know who he was. You were created, you were designed to know his voice. So I want to ask you, and I'm asking for participation, and I know the first thing you're going to go through is what I just taught you, right? Well, what am I feeling? Because when she asked me this question and for me to participate, I feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And why do I feel that? Well, because people are going to look at me. Well, and if I follow that, I can either follow where that's going to lead, which is going to silence me, or I can follow what I know I should do and, and share, and that's going to maybe produce a change in someone else's life and maybe give them the strength to share also. In the 9 a.m. service, we had a YouTube video for worship, and there was a leader here, Stephen, and the, the MC was awesome and getting us hyped up, and Stephen just started clapping. He was the only one, and I'll be the first one to admit. I'm sitting there, I'm like, uh, is it okay to clap? Or are these kids going to be like, listen, I, I want it to be quiet. I'm real. I was like, get the heck out of here. Right? And as soon as I joined in with him, guess what? Another one did. And another one did. And everyone was clapping. So I'm going to ask you to participate. And what I'm going to ask you is just like I did in the 9 a.m. Tell me a moment that you feel you heard the voice of God. Yes. Dude, dude, yes, every day of the week, yes, that's awesome. That is what it is to hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God will evoke an emotion. It will create a response, an act, an action. Dude, that is awesome. Yes. So, um, I think it was like three years ago. Yep. And um, we were coming, it was um, when, it was like when First Wednesday used to be here. Okay. And um, we were going home and it was like a really bad rainstorm. Uh huh. Just pouring down the rain. And so we're in the car and then there's this group that came. And it's like, it's like only kids can do nothing. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome, dude. In that moment, he saw a need and he heard respond. That's awesome. Yes. Okay. Wow. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know what I love about that? You said we've been praying for him. 
You've been speaking to God concerning him and what God responded, right? God has softened his heart. God is speaking to him and he reached out and that was evidence to you. God is continually speaking. And what I love about this is that you see his dad's not in the church. His dad's not coming to prayer meetings. But his dad is hearing God. Hello. The world was all created by Jesus. Everybody has his words written on their heart. They hear the voice of God. Whether they respond or not is another question. And his dad chose to respond. That's powerful. Yes, baby. Come, give me some. That is awesome. I love that. I love that. Did you know that sometimes when someone's name or face just goes across your mind, you think about them? That is God. Anytime, anytime, anytime I have that, I have had that happen. And look, it took me time to learn this. And I will just stop what I'm doing and pray for them. And there are times that when I stop and pray, I know I'm to call them. And do you know what really had to drive this home for me? Unfortunately, I had a moment like that. I was driving on a road that reminded me of a friend that I hadn't talked to for about three years. Reminded me of him. And I thought, oh, and I said it out loud to my mom. Mom, I've got to call Mike. And I just prayed for him as I was walking or driving and, and, and really quick. But I knew I was to call him. And I didn't act. And God is forgiving and God is awesome and God is loving. But my friend, that weekend killed himself. Do you not think every time now when somebody's face or name comes across my mind, I listen maybe a little more closely and I act a little bit quicker? I love that. You were thought of a friend who needed Jesus. You didn't just pray, you responded to that call and you acted. And now her life is forever changed. No matter what comes her way, no matter what she does, if she ever falls away from the Lord, she'll always know her way back home because of your influence in her life, because your willingness to hear the voice of God and respond. Yes, baby. We all read our scripture a lot. I'm going to let you, I'm going to put her in. And she likes to fight with us about our opinions. And um, she was talking to us about something that is not biblically correct. And um, we protested against her and then the argument ended, ended. And later that night, I was thinking about it and I said, I should just give up. And then God told me, keep fighting. And I looked up scripture tomorrow, the next day of school, um, the whole group had already, we had all found evidence and we protested against her and everything she brought up, we just struck it down. And eventually she gave up and left the room and we won the argument. Wow. So what you're saying is you had a friend who was saying something contrary to the word of God. What I love is your tenacity to seek out the truth. See, there are going to be moments in your life where you encounter other people, other beliefs that look like Jesus, right? Or come in the name of Jesus, and they're not true. But how will you know if it's true or not? Yeah. Whose voice it is in there? Yep. That's right. So you went to your Bible and you sought the truth. 
that's beautiful. Now maybe I would challenge you and your friends to go a step further. And I would say, God brought this scenario. It's in your life. You were beautiful and wonderful to seek his truth. And now as a group, begin to pray for that girl, for that friend. And ask Jesus, Jesus, give me your heart towards her. Let it not be a rivalry of words, but teach me how to love her the way you do. Because what can happen is when you find the truth for yourself and somebody has not, it can kind of put a wedge between you. But what Jesus comes to do is to reconcile. And so though you may never see the same, he'll love them and you'll love them. And that's okay. You're getting familiar now with the idea of we agree to disagree. Right? That's good. That's really good. Did you have your hand up, baby? No. Yep. Okay. Um, she can't remember anyone. And so whenever she starts, my little brother asks her um, to remember, try to guess her names. She said she tried, but she started crying, and God told me that everything's going to be all right. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. That is hearing the voice of God in the midst of those scenarios and situations, right? It's tough. Because in those moments, it's hard to believe that it's going to be okay when it doesn't look okay, right? But then God speaks truth, and he says, it's going to be okay. And what did that do when God spoke that to you? How did you feel? I felt good. You felt good. It, I'm sure, no doubt, took a pressure off of you, right? You weren't worried anymore. That's what you feel when the voice of the Lord speaks to you. When God speaks to you, you will find peace and assuredness, restedness. Yep. She's not religious because her, her parents don't take her to church. She, uh, she kind of believes in a few things, and um, she, she's had some one of my be, my other best friends ask her if she was religious, and it, she, she just asked if she was Christian, and she's she's afraid someone's gonna ask her again. So she was telling me like, what should she say? She was asking me what to say if somebody asked her that question again. Uh-huh. So. That's good. So now, sorry, this little guy keeps, maybe I'll just go away from it. If you guys want to mute that. Um, that's good. And what I would challenge you to say in response to that, like, what do I say next time? Well, explain to her what it is to be a Christian. Say, you know what? Like, I wasn't religious either at one point, or I always was, but when I give my life to the Lord, when I ask Jesus just to come into my heart and live with me, um, he came, and me knowing him, and he beco- becoming, like, he forgave me of all my sins and became, like, my best friend, I, I became a Christian. Would you like me, would you like to pray with me so that you can experience that? You know? Because in that moment, she's opened her heart up to you. And she's saying, I believe some things, but I'm afraid somebody's going to ask me. Well, do you want to be a Christian? Right? She doesn't know how to get there. So you could help her get there. And that's awesome that she was comfortable and confident to speak with you and share with you. You have the influence in her life to change her life forever. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, right back here. For some reason, I just thought of Jesus, and then, like, five seconds later, later, I had an illusion of him, and I saw him talking to me, and since me and my mom had a hard time in life, um, he said, just love your mother all, all you can and help her out. Mic drop. <laughs> Dude, give me some. That's awesome. Listen, I love this. I love this. He's asleep. He wakes up. He thinks of Jesus. 
Five seconds later, he has a vision. That's what that is, a vision of Jesus. And Jesus speaks to you what only your heart knew you needed to hear. And he brought you clarity in that moment, right? What else did you feel after he, when he spoke? I felt, I felt shocked because I, I thought nobody would help me and my mom ever. And I just felt very peaceful and I just went back to bed and kept thinking of him. That's awesome. So it brought you peace. And it allowed you to know that Jesus is taking care of you and your mom. There's no one else that has to. If you're in the hands of Jesus, you're in the best hands there are. That is what it means to have visions, to have dreams of God. The scripture that I had that I was going to share with you, and I just want to continue in this space, and I'm going to get to you too, bud, in just one second. The scripture that I was going to share, there are so many throughout scripture of of God talking to his people, but time. Okay, thank you, buddy. Um, The scripture that I was going to get to, but I won't, is um, talking about having a vision right? And, and, and him processing it and, and trying to digest it. Um, and I love that because like we said, God speaks to you in visions. He'll speak to you in dreams and he'll speak to you in a still small voice. Last thing, bud, did you want to add? And then we're going to close. Um, a few, like a year ago, um, there was just, I was inviting a bunch of my friends to church, sat at my art table and there was just one girl there and I was like, Hey, do you want me to get, do you want to go to church? And then she was like, well, my mom doesn't really let me go to church. And then I kept thinking about it. And then I was like, well, do you want to be a Christian? And she's like, yeah, but I'm not sure what my mom will think about that. And then I was like, well, and all my other friends at that table were Christians too. And so we all got a bunch of Bible verses and we told them to her, and she kind of got into it and stuff. And since then, um, she has moved. But she, before she moved that year, um, I got, I found out one of the prayers, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper. And then I found her and all my friends, and then we prayed that prayer with her. And so now she's a Christian. Dude. That is awesome. Do you see what I mean? You literally can change the world around you. Guys, I'm so sorry we're, we're, we're out of time, but I want you to just stand with me, okay? We're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna pray. And if any of you have extra time, I saw one more hand I didn't get to. If you have time when we're done praying, if you wanna just come up and share it with me and I'll have the microphone so people can hear it too. If you have the time to stay and you want prayer so that you can hear the voice of God clearly in your life, so that you can experience him in new ways and change the world around you, I would love the opportunity to pray for you. So every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. Jesus, we love you and we thank you that you speak to us, that you're our personal cheerleader, that we can hear you clearer than anybody else. Help us to hear with your ears, God. Let our hearts receive what you speak and help our feet to move to action. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for how much you love us. And today we say, let us hear you clearer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you guys need to go, you are dismissed. If you do not need to go, please feel free to come up. I'd love to hear your stories. And if you want to come up, baby, and share what you were going to say. Yes. Hey, guys, fifth fifth grade, we do need to go over to the other room for pickup. Go to the Alive room for pickup. Guys, we love you guys. We'll be praying for you. Have a great week. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Wait till the light goes red, okay?
said that a guy, an electrician gave him a card and it was his card and he saw him at the gas station and when he, my dad, he wanted to show it to my grandparents. It was funny because my uncle was an electrician. He looked on the back and it had a verse from the Bible and it said, and it, and it said, um, Thou who praise the Lord with thy mouth shall, shall be blessed and shall be saved. And that was, I, th- I think that was, and we said that was our uncle telling yes. us that he's okay. Yes. God will give you words that brings peace, right? That makes you feel and know that everything. Dude, that is awesome. I love it. And I love that he used a card because God will speak to us like that. He'll 